Hi, it's Adrian. I'm really excited for this video. I've been working on this effect system for a little while now, and I can't wait to like walk you through it and show you all the cool things you can build with it. So let's create new abilities and use these effects. So first we're gonna go to the database and find ability sheet. So an ability sheet is basically the description of an ability. So you could have one implementation of an ability and multiple ability sheets. So you can use this implementation with various settings. For instance, there is only one ability that is implemented for projectiles, but we have multiple ability sheets for the fireball, for the arrow and for like the triple shot. What you need to remember is that you don't need to create a new prefab for each ability, but you definitely need to create a new ability sheet. So today we're going to create a new ability and we're going to base it off the fireball. So let's click on AB underscore fireball. From there, you should be able to see the AB underscore fireball inside of the project window. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate it and we're going to call it AB underscore toxic underscore spread. So now we can click on it and see its settings in the inspector. From there, you can see the display name for the ability. We're going to set toxic spread and then we can see the icon setting. You can choose any icon you want. The fire bullet icon is good enough for now. Then you can set the orientation mode. So polydirectional means that the ability can be casted in any direction. Horizontal means that it can only be casted left or right. And static means that it cannot be casted in any direction, but it's going to rely on whatever code is in the ability prefab. Then you have the ability state management mode. So this basically determines whether your ability should be active, off or toggled automatically when it's casted. So most abilities should be fine with the automatic setting. But if you make an ability that is passive, maybe always on is a good option. Then you have the FX list, which lists all the effects that this ability can apply. And you can see we have one effect in there, the immediate damage effect. It can unfold everything and we can look at all these settings. So the target flags is very important to set. If you forget to set it, your ability just might not work. So target flags indicates who your ability can target. Should the ability be able to target allies? Should it be able to target enemies or yourself? It's up to you. But it's not because you select self that is gonna target yourself. If you want the ability to target yourself, you need to also use the correct prefab. So for instance, there is a prefab called self-cast. If you use this prefab, there will be an animation and in the middle of the animation, all the effects that you list are gonna be applied to yourself. For this ability, the spell cast is all we need. So we wanna set the target flags to enemies. The interruption policy determines whether the ability should stop trying to apply effects if one of the effects fail. So if we set after fail, it means that if this effect fail to apply, then the following effects will be ignored. For instance, if you set the interruption policy to after fail and your attack fails because of a missed hit, then the rest of the effects won't be applied and will just be skipped. You can also determine a failure rate. If you put it to 1, it's always going to fail. And if you put it to 0, it's never going to fail. The damage type is basically the element the ability should use, whether it's magical or physical. This is going to change how the damage scale. If you use magical, the damage are going to scale based off intelligence. And if you put physical, it's going to scale off of strength. The scaling factor determines how much of the attribute that is referenced by this damage type, so either strength or intelligence, should affect the final damage. If you put 2 and you have 5 intelligence, then this ability will do 10 damage. Of course, after that, you'll need to consider the defense of the target. Then you have flat damages, which can be used to apply damages that are not scaled based on the stat. After that, you can set the critical behavior. Uh, I like to set it by default, meaning that the ability can critical hit. And the misbehavior, also default. 
unless I'm working with an ability that is temporal, like temporal damage over time, these kind of abilities, I don't, I generally don't want them to be able to miss. And then you can decide whether or not you want your ability to ignore the defense, and you can also make it silent. So silent damage is a damage that doesn't knock back the enemy, and that doesn't trigger invincibility frames. Then you can decide what audio to play on fire, and of course the mana cost of the ability, so let's put it to 1, and the cooldown, let's put it to 5. You can also determine if you want this ability to be potentially interrupted. This can happen if you get hit while casting the ability. And then you have this other option, disabled actions while casting, that lets you choose what kind of actions should be forbidden while casting is in progress. So for instance, most abilities you want to stop the player from moving, interacting, use other abilities, and move their target direction while casting. You can also choose to update the look at direction of the character when the ability is fired. Then you have another list with auto applied effects to caster on fire, which basically means that any effect you add here will be applied to you when you cast, no matter the prefab that you set right here. And then you have some projectile specific settings, like which projectile should we use? What's the speed of the projectile? How many projectiles should we cast? And what's the spread between all these projectiles? So this spread is only useful when you have more than one projectile. Then the explosion radius determines how big the explosion is gonna be. When you set an explosion radius, you wanna make sure that the projectile that you use has a death animation. Otherwise, the explosion will be applied, but it won't be visible. You can also decide to apply the base effects that you have right here to all the targets that are in the explosion radius. And you can decide to ignore the primary target when applying the explosion effects. This is recommended to set, otherwise the primary target might be hit twice. Once because of the projectile and twice because of the explosion. Finally, you can set additional explosion effects and you can decide to ignore the primary target or not. So for instance, if I want my fireball to explode and then poison everyone, I would need to add the poison in this additional effects. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. So let's add a new effect. Let's set it to temporal damage effect. And let's expand that. You'll notice that there are two types of effects, the immediate effects and the temporal effects. So immediate effects, they are applied instantly, whether it's a damage, a heal or mana restoration, while temporal effects are applied over time. They can be controls like stun, immobilization or silence, or they can be damages, heal, mana restoration, speed modification or stat modification. It's very easy to create your own effect by implementing the right interface. You can find more information about that in the documentation. For now, let's use a temporal damage effect. Now let's expand the effect data, temporal data, and damage data. So effect data is very similar to what we saw over here. Actually, it's the same thing. So for the target flags, we're gonna put enemies. For the interruption policy, we're gonna set it to after fail. We're gonna leave the visual flags to none. Otherwise, visual flags are useful if you want your ability to have no floating text and no camera shake. Let's leave the failure rate to zero. And now let's look into temporal data. So temporal data are exposed by any temporal effect. If you set the duration to zero, then the effect will be infinite. So let's set it to five. Then you can define a stackable effect ID if you want your ability to stack. For instance, I'm gonna set it to toxic underscore spread, and I'm gonna set the stack behavior to refresh duration. This means that if this ability hits the same enemy twice, instead of applying the effect twice, it's gonna refresh its duration. There are many types of stack behaviors like add duration, if you wanna extend it, or interrupt. So 
you could have one ability that puts an enemy into one state and another ability that reverts that state. Then in the damage data, we're going to set some flat damage. We're going to put one magic damage per second. So the interval is going to be one. We're going to set the misbehavior to never and the critical behavior to never. I like to set it this way for damage over time. I don't want them to miss nor critical hit. Then we can check silent to make sure that there is no pushback that is applied for each tick. Then you can decide to check delay first tick if you want the first tick to apply after the interval. Now let's hit save. And let's go back to our characters. So Hiroshi, custom hero. And here we're going to add the new ability instead of fireball. So the new ability is called toxic spread. So here it is. Let's assign it. And now we need to update the save file for the custom hero and make sure that the new ability is equipped instead of the fireball ability. If we leave the fireball ability, we will have an error because this character doesn't have this ability anymore. So let's look for toxic spread and assign it. All right, now let's try it. So to try it, we're going to go to a map that doesn't have any cinematic, so it's easier to play test. Let's try the planes. And let's hit play. You'll notice that I'm currently playing with Devon instead of playing with the Bandit. So to fix that, what we can do is adjust the default save file. To do that, you go into game config, cfg underscore game, and then you'll find playtest save file. You can edit it and set it to custom hero that we created during the previous tutorial. Now, if I hit play again, so now we need to find an enemy to try this ability. So if I just do it on the slime, I can see the slime is poisoned and he's taking zero magic damage. The reason why he's taking no damage is because the slime has some magic resistance. So what we want to do is update our ability to completely ignore defense. So we go back to ability sheet. Then we go to toxic spread and we check ignore defense. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this slime so we can try the effect of the explosion. Let's hit play again. So I can see that the explosion doesn't reach the other slimes. So if I want to have a bigger explosion, I can adjust the radius. So I go back to my ability sheet, toxic spread, and I'm going to set the explosion radius to two. Of course, when you edit the radius, you also need to make sure your animation reflect that radius. Otherwise, your player are going to be somewhat confused by why this explosion is affecting this character if visually they are not touching. So let's hit play again. Okay, I think this ability is a little bit too strong, so let's tone it down. Let's edit the scaling factor from 2 to 0 0.5. So the magical damages are going to be pretty small. And now we can see both enemies are poisoned. Let's bring a third one. And now they're all poisoned. All right, now I'd like to go over some other types of abilities. So let's look at the contact damage ability. So ability sheet, corrosion. So this one uses the contact damage prefab. So contact damage is damage that is applied whenever there is a contact between the source and the target. 
so you can see that the orientation mode is set to static because there is no casting. Also, you can see that the ability state management mode is set to always on. And you can see two effects. One, immediate damage effect. So basically when a slime hits you, you're gonna take some magical damage. And then over time, over 13 seconds, you're gonna take magical damage every four seconds. Another type of ability is the dash ability. You can see that the dash ability has no effects but it has auto-applied effects to caster on fire set to temporal speed modifier. So with this effect, we can change the speed of the caster for a given duration. And I also added a stackable effect ID because I don't want this factor to go over two if this ability is cast multiple times. There are many types of effects, so I'd recommend playing around with all of these effects and trying them yourself. If you want to learn more about the ability system and the effects system, I'd recommend going to the documentation, so window, Mithril 2D, documentation, and reading the abilities page, as well as the effects page. Here you're going to find tons of information about how to use abilities, how to create your own abilities, etc. Thank you so much for following along, I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you next time for another tutorial. Cheers.